I'm a, a Scotsman and an, a, an Ayrshire poet from the, the county of Ayrshire in Scotland. Uh, I was born and grew up here in the little mining village of New Cumnock and I've lived in this area virtually all my life. I've never really travelled far from, from, from where I was born and grew up. So it's very important to me, you know, the landscape and, 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 and where I live features very strongly in, in my work and my poetry uh, and, 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 and inspires and informs a lot of, of what I write about. Plus, I write in Scots language, in, in Lallan Scots as well, um, which is another key aspect of, of, of my writing. I left school and, and did an apprenticeship in the coal mining industry as an engineer. Um, but I was always reading. I was always, I was always a great reader, and, and I always liked poetry. And I, and I love music. Um, we're a kind of musical family, and. Um, so I would dabble as a teenager writing song lyrics and wanting to be a pop star, which of course crashed and burned as it usually does. Quite a bit of my writing was, was writing about the social issues round about me, um, like post-1984-85 and the miners' strike, which really decimated the economy around here and, and industry. That made me very angry. And I would get rid of that anger by, by writing about it in, 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 in poems. Uh, that's the magic thing for me in poetry, is, is taking something that's quite mundane and then making it into something that's quite magical. You know, that's, that's, that's the true art in poetry. And the poems are like buses or trains, you know, they don't, they don't always come along. And you don't bother with that, you know, but then a week or two will go by and then, or even a month or two, and then all of a sudden a few poems will appear. And, that, and that's great, you know, I don't, I don't worry about that, you know. So, something always comes along. It always comes along and there's always something to inspire me to write, write a poem. I remember writing a poem years ago, uh, it turned into a, a sonnet, and it was looking out the, the, the fields at the back here, uh, and it was about Easter time with the lambs, and there was obviously there was a dead lamb lying in the field and and a big carrion crow had come in and was pecking at the dead lamb, you know, and, and, and you know, I was able to watch that and, and I got my binoculars so as I could have a really close look at this and watch this. Here was nature in the raw, you know. But th this was part of the kind of, you know, that whole sort of circle of life thing, you know, it's part of nature. So there was something really profound in that. So that idea and, and, and these graphic images stayed in my mind for quite a long time. So the kind of, the seed is sown, the idea is there, the spark, you need the spark, the seed of the poem is there. And then it's put into the, the poetry bank for a while uh, and, and it kind of, and it, and it kind of percolates away there for quite a while and I kind of, it forms, the, the, the poem starts to form in my head, how am I going to tackle this? Old song. In a sea of green, one tiny smear of red announces spring. One sacrificial lamb lies stark and still upon the hill. How calm the scene appears, the distance makes the dead almost imperceptible to the eye. Ringed, ill-omened black pall-bearers stand. This ancient dance, the rhythm of the land, they jerkily act out instinctively. Rapacious beaks peck viciously the tongue. Staccato stabs Stravinsky might have scored. Past care, the carcass flails its broken cord. Yet strange that I should mourn this song unsung, whilst from the flock not one protesting cry, unmoved they crop and graze the grass nearby. You can always see things in nature that that, that tell a story about the whole universe, our, our, our human existence, you know. There, there, there are stories there. Burns' mouse poem, poem where, he, where the, 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 he's ploughing and the plough turns up the mouse's nest. And, and this becomes a, a metaphor for, 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 for fate and, and chance and disaster in human life. 
and how, you know, we're only one step away from some bad thing happening. So, like he says, you've got to catch the moments as they fly and, and enjoy life on a day-to-day -day basis. And and I suppose and then, then from that idea, this is my, my night's move poetry mind thinking here, then my next, the, 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 that links me to my great interest in Omar Khayyam, the great Persian poet. When I worked the, 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 the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam into Scots, you know, there's something like 200 and... 32 stanzas in, in the the, the, um, the version that I worked in. So that took, I worked in that for at least a year, and then it was probably about another year of tinkering about with it. Uh, and You know, his, his writings are so fatalistic. It's all about um, the sort of carpe diem, seize the moment, seize the day idea. You know, live for the moment, enjoy life, and take it from day to day. and. Don't worry too much about about triumph and disaster, which leads just to Kipling. You know, there's all these links that, that go on in poetry, and and you get ideas and inspiration from other poems and other poets and their writings, and and you can twist them round about and turn them round about and to create new poems. So it's it's a it's a never ending journey, writing poetry. Um, so I can't wait for the next the next poetry bus to come along. <laughs> <laughs>